Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I'm going to show you all how to make your own extruded polymer clay canes and how to make cabochons out of those. So let's get started. So here you can see I have little rounds cut out of a couple of different colors. These were cut out of clay that was on the thickest setting on my pasta machine, the size 1. If you did thinner clay, you would be able to um, get a more gradual color blend. And you could see there with that piece of scrap, it really looks like malachite sometimes. Now I'm using a tool called an extruder. I really like this one because it has a crank handle and it's so much easier on my hands than some of the other designs on the market. There will be links to all the different tools and materials down in the video description box below. I'm going to take the cap off. I've been working with this so there's still some scrap clay in there. But I'm just using the quarter inch round hole for, on the extruder cap and they have a bunch of different designs that come with it. And now I'm just going to come through and stack kind of alternating light and dark colors. There's so many different infinite ways that you could layer color combinations to get the effects that you're going for. And I'm going to stack until we have about two or so inches um, of our colors. Kind of compress it together. Try not to get any air bubbles in between the layers. And the cutter I'm using is a little too big to fit into the extruder tube. So I'm just rolling it down a little bit. And then smooshing it and rolling it and then feeding it in and that fits just so excellent then we screw the cap on i like to use my extruder tool while the clay is very warm from being worked with it just again makes it a lot easier to get it to come out the end and um on that same note i like to use up the entire contents of the extruder that way the clay doesn't have an opportunity to harden up um, from just resting inside the tube. So you can see I'm just cranking it down. And you can really feel the uh, the tube heat up from the pressure of pushing the clay through. And then we're just going to pinch it off. <laughs> um, and then it, you can feel it even here how warm the clay is. That's why I really like working on this cool marble surface because it helps the clay to cool down that much faster. Even in the in the heat of summer it still stays relatively cool. And then you can take the cap off and see, I love this extruder because there's no clay left in the tube portion. It's just up in the cap. So cleanup is so much easier than, again, some of the other designs I've used. I went ahead and extruded out another piece. And you can see the difference between the one I freshly extruded is quite limp, whereas the one that I let rest for a bit is much stiffer. And this comes in handy because it's not going to smush your design as much. The first inch or two of your design isn't go of your uh, extruded snake rather isn't going to have the design in it. You want to cut a little farther back, and there you can see it's starting to get those concentric circles of color. And then you can roll your scrap into a little malachite bead. Now this book is the first book I ever got on polymer clay, and I highly recommend it for um, just having an on-hand resource of all the foundation techniques, everything from just inspiration galleries to they have some different um, tips and techniques on using different findings in your jewelry like how to make your polymer clay beads into something wearable as well as a brief you know, overview of the different tools it goes over how to make um, faux gemstones uh, as well as like amber and stuff and then it also it, it really does it covers just about every foundational technique that I've come across and as far as having everything in one book goes I really highly recommend this one and sometimes I'll just flip through it when I'm looking for inspiration and so uh, if I were starting from scratch um, I would just layer the snakes together to make the cane that, that you see here but I wanted to get some different size dimension going on so I rolled some of them together and now and then reduced them and now I'm adding on more of the original sized around the edge and it's just a little difference between you know the sizes of circles but that can come across pretty fun in the final piece and I'm just layering it again trying to make sure I'm not trapping any air bubbles smushing a little bit as I go and again, the possibilities here are endless. You don't have to do it in a circle. Um, you could uh, put a few pieces together and then shape them into triangles or squares. Um, you could wrap them in a contrasting color of clay um, to get, like, I don't know, just 
just experiment with it. <laughs> so now we have our layers together and I'm just going to kind of smush and roll it on my work surface to get everything kind of compacted down together. And again, this comes in really handy whenever the clay is still warm from being worked with because you can get it all to distribute evenly. So here you can see we have just a bit of mixed together scrap clay that's been fed through my pasta machine at its thickest setting. And then once you have your plug assembled, um, I'm actually going to come through and you could do very thin slices um, that won't stretch very much or you could do very thick ones. I'm going to try to do both. Also this plug has been sitting for a while so it's had an opportunity to firm up nicely. So I'm going to do a couple of pretty thin ones. You can see it's, I mean, millimeter, maybe two in the thicker spots. I'm not, I'm not very good at cutting like even thicknesses. <laughs> um, that's just me though. So here's one a little bit thicker. And I'm only going to be filling up about half of my clay here. Let's see. Now for some thick ones. Down here on the end. I'll do a really thick one and then we can actually do another thicker one and cut it in half and kind of just take that and smush it in. You don't feel like you have to keep the round shape of what you're doing. The more irregular you make this, the better. So now I have this and I'm going to feed it through my pasta machine, again on the thickest setting, coming in this way. Like, boop, not this way, this way. So here you can see in a side-by-side -side comparison, the way that the thicker clay spread just a little bit more than the thinner clay. And that's the thicker you make it, the more of a spread you'll get. And so now, since I only put it on half, I'm actually gonna come through and fold that in half. I'm losing a little bit of the pattern right there, but that's okay. And now I'm going to feed it through long ways because I want to distort it evenly. There we are. So you can see there, now we're still starting to get even more distortion, a little bit more pattern happening with the colors. And now here off to the side, I actually have some black clay, just regular old black Sculpey, fed through on the thickest setting again on my pasta machine. Let me zoom out so y'all can see what it is I'm doing. Please excuse my messy work area. That's just life now. Um, I'm cutting this right down the middle. And I'm actually going to be putting it just like this on my clay. Yeah, I could probably do this one farther down. We can make them be lined up with each other. I mean, just use your artistic eye to decide how you want your things situated. And so, and you can see just those couple of layers, this is gonna make quite a bit. Um, I'm feeding it through, again, uh, do I do long ways? I'm gonna do it this way. And again, this is just on the thickest setting on my pasta machine. There we go. <laughs> And now we can come through again and slice kind of right along this line because I don't want to disrupt too much. Like I don't want to cut it down the center um, and disrupt all that nice patterning. So now bringing it down, down a setting, making the layer a little thinner, feeding it through this way. Oh, and I made this quite long. So now I'm going to do on my number three down another setting feeding it through that way and you can see now we're starting to get some really nice spreading on all of our pieces and I think we're going to leave this one like this and I'm going to feed this one through don't forget to knock it back down there we go you can see Now with this one, we could actually come through and add, setting that off to the side, another layer of the black clay. 
Because I really like getting all the different distortions and things. How do I get in here? I just want my clay. There we go. Yeah, I like to condition. I'll get one big brick of clay, slice it down, condition it into little sheets, um, and then wrap them up in plastic wrap for use later. So now I'm going to bump this back down to one. But I was going to say, I really like getting all oh, the horrible sounds of the pasta machine squeaking and my table shaking. I really like getting the spreads of the clay distorting. And so again, now it's a little wide to be able to fit through. So again, I'm going to come in and I don't want to, I don't want to disrupt it too much. We can actually bend our, our knife. I'm going to knock it down to a two. Feed it through. And then knock it down to a three. And feed it through. So now you can see, again, the differences. Between the different layers of spreading. So this, these are crisper, this is more blurry, but again, it just depends entirely on what you're going for. So now let's move these over to our other work surface and start making them into cabs. So I've rolled out some black clay on my thickest setting, and I'm going to take one of the sheets of the patterned clay rolled out on my size three. This is a one thickness, this is a three thickness. And I'm just going to position it in a way that I'll be able to get the most out of, um, I want this patterned surface to, I want as much of it as possible to be overlaying onto the thick backing because that's going to help me to make a really nice cabochon. And then I'm going to take the cellophane that it was on and I'm going to fold it in half or cellophane, I don't know, it's just saran wrap, basically, like off-brand saran wrap, clear plastic wrap, um, and I'm going to lay it out, if you can get it to not have any lines in it, that's awesome, uh, I kind of like the lines, because it can give you some really interesting textures, and I wanted to go through and make some little donut beads, so I'm using two different sizes of cutters, I'm going to go through with my large cutter first, and I use this as like um, just a little plastic lid. I use that to protect my fingers, and you need to push down with quite a bit of force. You'll be surprised at how much more difficult it makes it to cut through whenever you have the plastic wrap on there. And then I'm using another cutter, much smaller, um, to just position. I don't like doing them directly in the center, I like to do it kind of off to one side a bit, but. I mean, you're making it so you can do this however you like. So I've smushed that down. And then you can just peel back yourself. And you can see it actually cuts through sometimes. But And you can do this without the plastic wrap. But you'll see here, this has a really nice rounded and domed edge. And then I'm just kind of behind the plastic wrap, pushing through to help it kind of detach going to pet those edges down and then I'm going to push this center clay out and I save this off to the side because this just makes a really nice little cabochon and then just using my fingertip to kind of round everything out and there we go that's a really nice donut and I'm just going to set this on here I have an old microwave plate that fits into my toaster oven, but you could use a ceramic tile or just whatever you like. This actually has a bunch of like old clay gunked up on it. I really need to clean it off, but I'd rather be crafting. So, um, set both of these off to the side for them to bake. And I get a whole plate of uh, clay before I start baking. So I'm going to put this back down. And now let's do another shape. This is a really nice kind of like water drop. It was a teardrop shape that I just pulled the sides out more on it. But you can take that and position it. 
then just smush down remove it and you can get some different effects too by if you did two layers of the um, backing clay or if you leave your front clay like your veneer clay just on the thickest setting instead of thinning it down a bit um, you would get an even more exaggerated domed effect so there's another really nice little you know uh, just making your own cabs for wire wrapping set that off to the side and then I would do that for this whole sheet and then I'm left over with a bunch of little um, just little bits of the pattern and so what I'll do is I'll often fold that um, and pass it through the machine fold it and pass it through and that will be distorted up even more until I'll start to get patterns that look something like this So this is how the pattern began, and then it started to stretch out, and then I eventually just got to where I was folding and rolling my scrap clay, and then you get some really interesting um, banding effects. So I like that with this one plug of color scheme and design, I can get some pretty different effects going. Like this one, once it's polished, is going to look quite a bit like actual malachite. Um, and that makes me really happy. Whereas this one looks more like a um, fantasy tortoise shell or something, you know, or something from the 70s. Uh, so, yeah, that's how we do it. And then also, this is one th where uh, I used a larger cutter and had a very thick plastic that was prone to getting lines. And it actually gave us a little bit of this, um, like, gathering almost. Like a really nice texture on the surface so experimentation uh, is very beneficial when doing things like this um, because you never know what you'll come up with and what you might learn hey y'all thanks so much for hanging out with me during this tutorial I hope that it was helpful to you um, just so you know I bake them for like once I get my whole plate made I pop it into an unpre like a cold toaster oven no preheating um, for about 30 to 45 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit if you're using and I'm using like Sculpey and Sculpey Primo um, so if you're using a different brand just follow the instructions on the pa manufacturers packet why are words so hard every time but um <laughs> you think I'd be used to saying this stuff by now but um but yeah these uh little cabochons in particular are actually going out in my January 2018 um, craft crates. So if you're interested in supporting everything that we do here at Back to Earth Creations as well as um, getting uh, entries into all of our different giveaways, getting monthly craft crates, and all sorts of different things, please check me out on Patreon. There'll be links down below, like in the little uh, the real arrow and you can click and it'll show more or you can click show more. Um, and it'll show you the tools and materials used in this project, links to my social media if you want to share pictures of me or tag me, um, and then also links to our Patreon. So thank you guys so much again for hanging out. I do hope that this was helpful, and I would love to see what you guys come up with, all the different color schemes and different things that we can do and different ways to wire wrap them too. I think actually if future Vaughn remembers to, might put a link up on how to wire wrap a donut bead. Da, 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 da. Um, so that'll be fun, but happy crafting y'all. I'll see you around. Bye. <laughs>